Hello viewers, welcome to Straight Up Science, where I give you my perspective on some sciencey things. So today we're going to be talking about something called a coral reef. Now if you don't know what the heck that is, it's basically where Nemo lives in Finding Nemo. And if you haven't seen Finding Nemo, I'd really recommend getting on that. I mean, come on, who doesn't love a movie about cute animated fish with various plot driving disabilities full of emotional moments that'll punch you right in the heart. <laughs> but anyway, tying our way back into coral reefs, the colorful Pixar animated ones in Finding Nemo are becoming less and less similar to how the actual Great Barrier Reef looks today. Now, let's make some things clear. Coral reefs are incredibly resilient. They've survived and thrived for millions of years. They know how to deal with destruction caused by natural disasters, namely cyclones. But there's one major issue that we and the coral are facing that has not been dealt with at this level before. And that would be... Okay, so I I'm going to pause right here and say that if you happen to be watching this and support the ideas of a certain... <laughs> political figure who may have said something to the effect of, quote, the concept of global warming was created by and for the Chinese and is, quote, an expensive hoax, then I'm just warning you that you might be a little triggered by my next two words. Climate change. Ah, uh, yes. An environmental phenomenon being denied by certain <coughs> politicians, despite the fact that scientific organizations all over the world support the idea that it's being caused by humans. List linked below if you're curious. But uh, this video is supposed to be about corals, so I'll save my rant about the environment and capitalist greed for another day. So, coral has been hit particularly hard by climate change in recent decades due to the Earth's rapidly rising and now record high temperatures. One might say, it's not cool anymore, now we say coral, as in that nose job is so coral. If you thought I was going to get through this video without making a Spongebob reference, you'd be wrong. Anyway, this has caused a phenomenon known as coral bleaching. Now, let's break down the way coral functions. They have a symbiotic relationship with this type of algae called zooxanthellae. And these algae are the main food for the coral. But when the coral becomes stressed by things like pollution and higher ocean temperature, the algae gets expelled from the coral. If you're having a hard time understanding why something like this would happen, just because of higher temperature, think of it like this. The human body has a certain internal temperature range that it can stand. When you're sick and have a fever, for example, that internal temperature has gone up, and it really only has to go up a few degrees for it to have an effect on you. It's a similar situation with coral. With record high ocean temperatures, coral reefs are becoming sicker than ever. And with a lot of that sickness comes death. Just in the past two years, the Great Barrier Reef has lost half of its coral due to two bleaching events combined with a very strong El Nino, which is the natural cycling of temperatures on the ocean surfaces in that area. Now, I don't know about you, but that fact is actually horrifying to me. The idea that one of the most resilient reefs in the world could be half destroyed in such a short amount of time is terrifying. And it's not just the Great Barrier Reef. This is happening all over the world. Year by year, day by day, humanity has blindly built itself up to be able to destroy some of the most resilient life forces on the planet. Likely not realizing until it's too late that nature's doom means our doom.
like, and subscribe.